what is going on guys welcome back to another video here we're gonna be hopping in rosine here we're gonna be going to film with a truck we have not filmed with in a little while here that would be the nasty red got my loud and proud diesel trucks coffee mug this guys these things are so freaking nice this coffee has been in here for probably two and a half hours and it's still very very hot with this lid closed it traps all the heat in there crack it open and it'll cool off slowly but surely um but this this thing is awesome i mean there was a morning a couple days back i made a coffee and i put it in this thing and i had the cap closed and it was sitting on the counter and I had forgotten about it for a couple hours. I come back, I'm like, ah, oh, man, it's probably cooled down now. And I opened this thing and steam just started pouring out and it was so freaking hot. So go check these out, they're on the store. You can buy them. If you like coffee on the go, you like it to actually stay warm for a while and they fit, you know what's funny? They fit like, like a puzzle right into second gen cup holders. But I'm not just saying that because it's my brand. These are awesome. So we're gonna let Rosine run another minute or two here and then we're gonna get on the road, but we're gonna be filming with Nasty Red. I have not filmed with that truck in quite some time. And I thought it'd be interesting to do a little bit of video around that truck, you know, what's been going on with it, and then maybe do a drive in that truck. And I've got the GoPro stuff with me so I can do like a head mounted camera angle of driving that truck. Maybe do a zero to 60 in that truck. I'm not positive. Maybe do a zero to 60 in that truck. Go over everything that's done to it that I can remember off the top of my head because it's been a while since I did that truck and I did all the horsepower upgrades to it. I have a pretty good idea of everything that's been done. So go over the stuff that's been done, do a zero to 60 run and see how it goes. Now, the thing is, it did rain today. So the roads might be a little wet still. Hopefully by the time we're done going over everything, the sun comes out and dries up the pavement a little bit. So it's a little bit easier to actually do a zero to 60 time. Check out this old car right here. Here is the nasty red flatbed compound turbo 12 valve known as just nasty red to most of our viewers who have seen the videos on this truck, the upbringing of this truck and you know, the build. No, all those leaks are not from this truck. It was actually my sister's uh, previous parking spot. So we're gonna get to starting up this truck, pulling it back to the barn, old school. You gotta like, use keys and stuff to get in now i have not driven this truck in a long time so i'm kind of i'm kind of curious on um how it runs it's been a, it's been a while she lives you know nasty red's got some quirky things about him got some got some annoying things like this thing always pops off the shifter always rattles for no reason there you go, no more rattle. So this thing always pops off. That thing always rattles. Dash is cracked. I mean, it's it's a 96 12 valve, you know? I mean, it's, it's old. It sounds like there's something broken in there allowing it to, to rattle. 153,000 miles ahead, 149, I think 149.5 uh, when he picked it up. Story behind this truck is it was not too long after I started doing YouTube and I had my first diesel and I just bought that recently and this had popped up for sale around the corner over there and the guy was asking like 8,000 bucks for it, right? At the time, the truck had, you know, some rust on the rockers. The bed that was on it was trashed. It was all rusted out because he'd cut up a bunch of, um, custom hidden like bed compartments where you could flip them up and there's like storage in the bedsides and stuff it was it was probably pretty neat you know 20 years ago when it was new but after all that time it just kind of became more of a mess than anything else so we got rid of it we did the flatbed it's a cm we've done a lot of stuff to this truck some stuff still needs done on this truck like i was saying with the interior there's some stuff that needs done uh, just a lot of rattly stuff crack dash grill needs painted because the one that was on it my dad didn't like the way it was painted he said it just didn't fit the truck very well and the paint looked a little different than the hood and so it just kind of drove him nuts overall it's been a great truck my dad's been using it as a farm truck the last few years since it's been done 
and he's been using it to haul hay bales, pull trailers, whatever, with um, some other projects he's got going on. You know, he can go to a lumber yard and just have him take a pallet of materials and just drop it on the bed. He's absolutely loved it, and the bed's actually held up pretty darn good. There's some minor scratches and stuff, but nothing bad. I mean, that's like the worst of it, and it's like a little bit of orange starting because it chipped a little bit there, and one more little spot right over there. But for the most part, this thing's held up really nicely with all the stuff he's thrown on this bed. Let's go over some more of the details. 96, 12 valve, built transmission by maximum overdrive, rated for like, I think 700 horsepower. This truck, we've never dynoed it, so I cannot claim a number to be like proven on a dyno to see how much power it makes. We are estimating the truck makes between five and 600 horsepower. You know, people are gonna be like, oh, well, there's no way because I have this, you know, the same mods on my truck and it only makes 485 or whatever. It's like, okay, chill, dude. It, it's an estimate, okay? But we think between five and six. When we originally built this truck, I did everything, by the way. I did the head studs, I did the injectors, I did the compound kit, I did like pretty much everything. I even did the governor spring kit in it, all that stuff. I mean, everything that was done to this, you know, I had my hands in it and it was, it was a lot of fun. It was the first truck I ever really did. Sorry, you probably hear the, you probably hear the cows going crazy back there, whipping their tails on the gate. But anyways, I did pretty much everything on this truck in terms of under the hood. You know, when we had originally built this truck, we had a goal in mind. We talked to the guys that we were working with at the time. We said, Hey, we want to make between five and 600 horse with this truck. This is the compound turbo setup we're gonna be having on it. You know, what all fuel mods, engine mods, whatever. What all do we need to make this truck run five, 600 horsepower reliably and be a super good daily drivable truck and not just not be high maintenance. And then we actually worked with pusher intakes for the compound kit on this truck, which I'll show you in a minute. And I'll show you what it looks like under the hood. It's probably a little dusty. And then I'm gonna to try to go over all the parts that I remember we did to it. I don't think I told you, I was talking about, we saw the truck on the side of the road for 8,000 bucks. I don't ever think I told you what we paid for it just now. We paid 5,000 bucks for the truck. When I say we, I mean, my dad bought the truck for 5,000 bucks and he planned on using it as a farm truck and then eventually selling his 7.3. But he ended up just getting this truck and then not doing the 7.3. And then uh, the 7.3 ended up getting wrecked and then basically going out that way. Some of the build stuff on this truck, some of it I paid for because I was doing it for YouTube. And then we had it in a giveaway where they had an option between this truck, my dually and a first gen that we were doing at the time. And then uh, the winner ended up choosing my dually. And so then this didn't end up getting given away at all. And the deal was my dad said, if you buy the built transmission, which was like almost five, I think it was like 5,000 bucks, if you do the built transmission, I'll let you use it in a giveaway. But if the truck gets picked, I had to pay him basically what he had into it, which looking back, I'm glad that they didn't pick it because it would have been a lot of money. He has a lot of money wrapped up in this thing, but I ended up paying for the transmission build, marketing with this truck for the giveaway. Nobody picked it. So he just got to get a free built transmission out of it. He didn't you know, pay me back for the transmission, but the deal was I got to use the truck as part of the giveaway. And then, um, which helped some people enter to win because there were a lot of people that wanted this truck. Now that we're done talking about that, we're running a pusher compound turbo kit on this truck. It's a stock HX35 over an S475. It's running, I believe, 120 horsepower injectors, 024 delivery valves, it's running push rods, 60 pound valve springs, a number five fuel plate. We're obviously running the pusher mega twin intake. We also have a high flow banjo bolt right here for the pump. ARP head studs were done on it as well. I did those as well. The truck is also running a fast lift pump with an in-tank fleece sump, which is pretty nice. And I'm sure there's some stuff I'm missing, but that's the gist of what was done to the truck. I think three or four years now since I've done that stuff. It's been a while, I will tell you that. It's been a while. And uh, you can definitely tell because the engine bay is getting kind of crusty. Maybe we should do a detailed video on this thing soon, but essentially that's what's been done to the truck and uh, in terms of power. And it, it seems to run really well. And I don't know if I forgot to mention this, but it does also have a 4K governor spring kit in it. So this is actually how I'm going to be filming this video. I have a beanie on. I know it's 95 degrees out. I'm wearing a beanie. Well, it's so that this, um, all these clips and bands don't, 
you know, get tangled up in my hair and rip my hair out when I go to pull this thing off. But I do believe the AC works on this thing. So we're gonna get the GoPro fired up, get on down the road and see how this thing rips. Okay guys, we got the stopwatch out. Let's fire up the 12 valve. Now, I, I thought the AC worked on this thing, so hopefully we're in good shape. Yes, yes, it does work. That's good. I was, I was honestly a little bit nervous. I was like, well, hopefully it works. Now I'm just gonna take this thing around the block for starts, let it warm up, wait till the coolant starts to get up to temp just a little bit. I don't have any gauges in this thing. Oh, we've got the gauges, I'm pretty sure. Would you guys like to see the video of installing the gauges on this thing? I'm pretty sure I've got everything we need to do it. And I, I'm not positive whether or not the manifold's already pre-tapped on this. I couldn't, I didn't look just now. I couldn't tell. I couldn't remember if we had an aftermarket manifold that's already tapped or if we need to tap it or not. But we do have a whole set of gauges for this thing. We just haven't just haven't ever installed them. So if you guys would like to see that, comment that down below. I can do the gauges. Maybe what we could do is take the truck from my dad for a little bit once we get some parts in and like do the gauges, fix the dash top, button up this interior stuff that's flopping around and just, just clean the truck up, make it more user friendly and more enjoyable to drive. I just, you know, when it's not at my house, it's just one of those things you just kind of forget that you even have it to work on here and there. You can see up ahead there, there is a nasty storm coming in. I mean, it's gonna get bad, but right now the pavement is actually dry. I'm gonna get over here on this road. There's a nice flat stretch of road here, and I think it would be perfect to do a pull from zero to 60. The temperatures are between 140 and 190, so there, I mean, it's probably, we're probably at I don't know, 160, 170 on the coolant temp at least. So engine's warmed up enough. We're going to get on this stretch here where it flattens out a little bit and do this zero to 60 pull. I want it to be on the most level ground possible because of course, you know, it's gotta be, it's gotta be fair and realistic. I don't wanna be over justifying what this truck's capable of or undermining what it's capable of. So. Let's get on this nice flat section of ground here right up ahead. See, it goes down this little slope and then it's flat all the way until those woods, which is exactly what we want. So we're gonna slow down here. No traffic behind us. I'm gonna try to build as much boost as I can till I see the black smoke kind of clear up a little bit. And then I'm gonna hit start as soon as I let off the brake. timer in time when I let off and I hit the timer it was spinning the tires pretty stinking hard I don't know if you could hear that or not the truck was going side to side tires spinning okay I think I can do one right here here's a nice straight shot if I can get it down to zero no cars coming behind just those two leaving ready building boost here we go Three, six. And again, the tires were spinning. Tires were spinning quite a bit at the launch. See if I can do one more pull before the before the rain starts pouring. Because it's definitely gonna start raining here in a minute. Look how dark it's getting out here. Okay. Building boost. Launch. Point six three, and again it did the same thing did the same thing that time as soon as I was launching tires were just just painting lines you know I, you know it's one of those things where you gain power for when you're towing and merging and accelerating and stuff but you know at a dig without four-wheel drive I'm talking you know, with all the extra power, it just spins your stinking tires, you know? 
It really does. I mean, it just it just rips the tires loose. You guys got to keep in mind though, this is a heavy truck. I mean, it's heavy. You're talking a you're talking a 12 valve Cummins in the front, huge steel flatbed in the rear. I mean, the thing's got some weight to it. It's a it's a heavy son of a gun. Let's do another one. Let's give her the beans. Building boost. And again, tires were spinning the whole time. First zero to 30, probably, they were spinning. Oh, that ain't bad. I mean, I'm not gonna complain. Here's the thing, guys, here's what you gotta realize. This truck, when this truck was built, it wasn't built to be like the fastest truck on the street. The truck was built to be a working farm truck that's got plenty of power for pulling, accelerating with a heavy load. That's even the way, that's even how the transmission was built. This transmission was not built for a street performance. This transmission was built to tow and heavy acceleration time to time, but it wasn't built for like a street transmission. Like when I told the guy how we wanted it built down at maximum overdrive, he said, are you gonna be like drag racing the thing? Are you sled pulling? I mean, like, what are you doing, you know? And I'm like, it's really, it's gonna be a farm truck that hooks up to a gooseneck and pulls trailers and hauls pallets of materials on the flatbed. I mean, it, it's not gonna be like, you know, it's not gonna be a street truck. It's gonna be a work truck. And so he's like, okay, so I'm gonna build it dominantly geared towards towing, you know? And, and that's how we built the engine. That's how we did the transmission to go with it. I mean, it was built to be a it was built to be a work truck, you know. So nine seconds with the tires spinning for the first zero to thirty miles per hour, most I think all three or four of those times, however many times we did it, that's not bad. I mean, the one time it was I thought eight something or basically nine, and then two times it was nine and some change, and then uh, or one this one time it was nine and some change, and then it did like two times that were basically 10.5 ish or something like that and that was again tires were spinning zero to 30 ish and then um kind of evened out after that and went straight but not bad not bad i'll take it i mean for a farm truck i'll take it well i'm gonna take my goofy camera setup off and get that packed up put the four-wheel drive shifter knob back on there but what did you guys think about that i mean i, I mean i'm always kind of torn because like when you're comparing it to like new trucks, like a new Ram 2500 or a brand new F-250 with the six sevens or a brand new Duramax, they're fast from factory. But you know, from factory, they've got, you know, the traction control on and off option. They've got a lot more horsepower stock than these did stock. You can make a lot more power a lot easier than you can with these things. I mean, these things are easy to make power, but I mean, like you can just, tune and do some minor things with transmission and engine tuning and right there get more power out of those trucks like that and then they're way faster than something like this without much how much effort in terms of engine work but that's going to be it for the video with nasty right here but let me know what you guys want to see on this truck if i can snag this truck from my dad and do the gauges fix the interior up stuff like that i know he would be okay with it as long as he's not needing the truck thanks so much for watching do not forget that if you want to enter to win our built 2005 Cummins plus $5,000 cash. It's your last 24 hours to get 20X entry towards winning that truck plus five grand. 20X entries end tomorrow, July 6th at 11.59 p.m. The 20X entries are gone. They're not coming back. Usually they come back at the end of the giveaway. This time 20X entries when they end, they're done. You guys are awesome. Could not do what we do without you guys placing the orders. Couldn't give away the trucks. Couldn't afford to, you know, make the videos full time and all that stuff. So we highly appreciate it, guys. You guys rock. If you haven't done so yet, hit that thumbs up, comment down below, subscribe if you're new, join the team, join the family, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.